All right, guys, day after Christmas, the 26th, it's uh, Boxing Day up here in Canada. As you can see, we've had a, uh, a white Christmas. We had a fair amount of snow in the past couple days. So we're out here shoveling this morning already. And it's cold. We're probably about minus 12 is the high today. I'm not expected to improve for the rest of the week. So we're dealing with some cold temperatures. I'm sure the garage is going to be a little frosty. Uh, I do have the heater on in there, but it's just on low, so uh, we'll turn you on once we get back into the garage. Alright, welcome back to the Tush Mahal. Just uh, coming up to 2.30 and uh, we get back out here in the garage today. We've got the heater uh, cranked up. Still not bad out here. It's just uh, well about 4 degrees Celsius, so it's uh, not unbearable, let's say, but uh, Definitely like to get a little bit warmer. I uh, was just taking a look at my uh, repairs from last week and I'm uh, happy to say I, I'm quite liking it. Um, again, I do have a little spots of grinding, a few spots of grinding to still do, but you generally, I think, appreciate it more when you sort of step away from it and come back to it and uh, definitely looks 100% uh, better than uh, what it did look before. So I'm quite happy with that, quite happy with the results. So uh, I think where we last left off, I was working on the, uh, the front corner of this car uh, before I ran out of welding gas. And uh, we were here, we just tacked in this patch here, we were just about to uh, finish up that before we ran out of gas. So uh, I managed to get some gas before uh, everything shut down for the holidays. Um, I do have a little bit of a story about that. I um, have two tanks and uh, good thing I have two tanks because when I brought them in, I found out that one of my tanks is uh, out of date so they wouldn't fill it. So I'm having to have one of my tanks recertified, uh, which gives me a, uh, I guess, a redate on the tank, uh, which gives me a, uh, I think they're dated for either five or ten years, I'm not even sure to be honest with you, but uh, anyway, that cost an additional $70 to get the tank recertified, so we're waiting for that to be done. I don't expect to pick that up until the new year, so uh, at least we've got one tank, full tank, to uh, to go through before we're going to need that other tank back. Um, so that's one quick story. I did um, clean up the garage as I threatened to in the last uh, video, the last uh, video out here in the garage. I think my last video was making cabbage rolls, which some of you probably didn't watch, which is okay. Um, I did pick up a few supplies. Again, I uh, needed some welding wire just in case, my backup. Uh, I picked up some Dremel discs. I was out of those and uh, you've heard me complain about the cost of those before some uh, Dremel grinding wheels which are great for the little tight areas and some Sharpies. Can't do without Sharpies in the garage. All mine were getting to be uh, dried up and uh, dull tipped so we've uh, invested in some new Sharpies to help us on our repairs. Anyway, uh, I guess enough talking and we will get back to repairing the front area of this car. I'm sorry about the light. Anyway, let me turn that light off and we'll come back and we'll discuss a little bit more about where we're going after we patch this area. Alright, so here's where we're at. So, uh, as mentioned, here's the area that we are working on. Just fixing this uh, little patch here, which entailed me fixing the inner uh, flange on the front valence before I fix the top uh, part of this. So it's a two-part patch. So we're just about to finish weld that in. And then we're going to move and uh, we're going to look at this area here which it looks like it's going to need a repair to the exterior wheel well at least, the wheel well lip. Um, although uh, with my luck, and I believe I can see a hole all the way through, that's going to also require an interior uh, patch to be made before the exterior patch goes on. And we'll probably have the same issue up here. So we we'll, may as well tackle those two little areas before we move on to some other area that needs attention. So. Let's break out the tools and uh, we'll start cutting and uh, revealing what's, uh, what needs to be done. Alright guys, I figured we'd hold off on doing the welding until we finish these two areas and we'll break the welder out. So I've just ground these, uh, these lips down on the wheel wells and I'm trying to find the spot welds so I can drop the, uh, drill those out. So I've got the drill handy here. We're just trying to find where those are located. We're going to drill them out and try to release that flange down a little bit before we cut it along the bottom. We're going to do that with our little uh, cutoff wheel on the Dremel. Alright, here we go. Alright, we were attempting to uh, drill spot welds and as we were drilling spot welds we just ended up going right through 
pretty rusty so we're going to end up removing this whole section so as you can see I've just got the little Dremel cutting wheel out and we've just drilled completely through the metal. Done the same down here. Anyway, we'll get the chisels and hammers out and we'll try to remove this patch as best as possible and uh, see how much of it we can keep intact. I don't want to completely destroy this whole area so we'll just go uh, carefully and gingerly. Alright guys, here's where we're at as far as those patches are concerned. You can see that uh, strip that I've cut out of the bottom here. This is obviously on the inside of the wheel well. Uh, I just wanted to show you this side before we go over to the other side. So here's the other strip I've cut out. And you can see these little two tabs here I've cut. So this is basically the bottom or the inside of the uh, inside flange. So those are the two tabs on the inside flange. And then the bottom cut is the outside flange. Maybe it'll look a little bit more apparent if I go around to this side. Let's have a look here. Let me have a seat. Alright, so here's what it looks like on the repair side. So again, the little tabs are the inside flange. And you can see that that inside flange doesn't go all the way to the bottom. It stops uh, part way down. And then the tab or the repair piece from the wheel arch extends all the way up to cover and seal that area. This one here, I didn't actually have to replace the rear flange. It actually looks okay as far as nice clean metal. So all we need to do is the repair piece from the wheel arch up. So this, pair is, this piece is a little bit easier. This piece you can see here that I've actually cut the outside panel back a little bit on either side to expose the inner so I can do the welding and grinding before I wrap the outside patch over top of it. So that's what we're basically in the process of doing this style of patch where there's two layers of metal. So I just wanted to give you a quick view of that. So it's uh, probably a little bit more involved than what you think. So I thought I would just uh, give you a quick shot of that. All right guys, template time. Or CAD drawing. It's our cardboard assisted design. Guys, patch is made, we're gonna weld it in. All right guys, the next patch is made. That's the top patch and as you can see, I've drilled the uh, holes for the uh, plug weld, so that's going to fit in there something like that. But before we do that, we're going to prime the back side and prime the back side, or the front side and the back side, with zinc primer, and then we'll weld that in. We'll come back once that's done. Alright guys, I apologize, but I've sort of been trucking along without you. We've uh, plugged this uh, patch up here. I had this patch already installed. I didn't have the plug welds done, so we've gone ahead and done that while we're in this area. There is that patch in fully welded and plug welded, obviously not, weld, uh, not ground down. Here is that uh, valence uh, patch that we put in, so obviously again now fully welded and plug welded. And the last patch we're on is this little guy down here. So uh, as you can see we've got him made and uh, we're just about to weld him in and plug him in. So uh, I thought I'd just give you a quick shot of that primed on the uh, back side and primed on the actual flange itself so we're pretty much ready to weld that in and uh, we'll bring it back once we have everything nicely ground down. Alright guys, quick update for you. Everything is ground down and looking good. I think that looks uh, pretty good now, much better than it did. Obviously the patch put in there somewhere, can't really even tell where it was. I did actually weld a little on the edge of this just to uh, weld it solidly to this uh, front flange piece, but it's also spot welded as well. And there was another patch in here, I think it was from here to here, you can just barely see where I put that in I think. So that looks good, nice and solid. And we ground down the welds on this piece over here from here to here. So I think that uh, whole entire wheel well and uh, front valence piece is looking 100% better. So uh, 
On to the next section. We still need to repair some stuff down here. We need to add a cage nut in here and possibly change this cage nut out here. So uh, we may continue on in this area or we may look for something else to accomplish tonight. So we'll see. All right guys, we're back out after a uh, bite of dinner and uh, I've managed to find my cage nuts. For anybody who have not uh, seen cage nuts, these were, are what they look like. These are off of my uh, TR3. These are sort of a new, uh, newer style, more modern, uh, a little bit better than the original uh, old stock style. But um, we're going to fit this here and uh, we're going to clean up the inside of the flange and uh, clean up the edges of this and we'll weld that in there. Uh, I think what we'll try to do is we'll try to, uh, we're going to tap through the existing one there and see if we can clean that one up. It's a little difficult to get to that one so uh, I'm hoping we can save what the, what's there currently and uh, make that one usable um, and then we'll just have to repair the bottom one. So that's what we're going to do now. Alright guys, you might have recalled I mentioned before in a previous video that the main goal of me doing all this work on this side of the car in this front fender area in particular was to get the front fender fastened through all of the fender mounting locations and uh, I now have to find or refine some of the holes that mount these fenders through the flanges because obviously where I repaired the flange I've got no holes left so I'm in the process of trying to uh, mark out and redrill those holes so we can uh, get a little bit closer to our goal of attaching this fender with all of the hardware supplied. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're just playing around a little bit, uh, trying to uh, mark everything out before we drill it. So we're going to get this thing bolted all the way up to the A-post. So we've got three fasteners at the A-post. We've got three fasteners underneath uh, the bottom of the fender to fasten. So. We're going to do those first loosely and uh, we're going to try to uh, reach up inside the fender and mark the bolt locations on the fenders on the uh, new flange. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. We may get frustrated and go inside a little early but uh, anyway we'll start the process anyway. Alright guys I think we're making uh, pretty good progress on uh, finding bolt holes or, or creating new bolt holes. So we've created a couple new ones here at the front. We've got a couple bolted up in the middle. We were working on this guy here and he's proven to be a pain in the ass. So uh, I don't have the patience to deal with that tonight. So uh, we're going to probably call it an early night. It's about uh, quarter to nine. We still have a couple more to find on the flange towards the bulkhead. Um, we did actually get the front bolted up here. So that seems to fit pretty good up here. So that's not too bad. Uh, we still have that filler piece to weld in, which we know about. We have the three uh, bolts down the bottom done up. Underneath the uh, fender, we've got the three bolts at the A-post done up, so that's all pulled up tight, which is good. We've got one bolt in here, so everything's looking pretty good gap-wise. Uh, that rocker's the best it's going to be. Really can't push it in anymore, so we're going to do a little body work over that. But I think it's going to be pretty good by the time we're done with it. Much better than it was anyway, so uh, anyway, there's the fender looking a little bit better and uh, bolt it on a little more solidly. So a little more work tomorrow and we'll, uh, we'll have that finished and then we can uh, maybe start working on repairing the flanges of the fender. There's a couple repairs at the nose of the, uh, of the fender that we need to repair as well as that filler piece which I have over here on the bench. Needs to be welded in. We actually have to uh, get a broken bolt out as well. So uh, this needs a little bit of work and if you recall it also needs a flange welded on the bottom with a captive nut as well. So uh, anyway, we'll maybe work on this tomorrow and uh, fully get that fender fitted so we can move on to some other area of the car that needs attention. Not like there isn't a lot to choose from. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.